In this video, we're going to talk about camera gear for wildlife photography. And specifically, we're going to look at reach, image quality, and carryability. And we're going to do all this with a spreadsheet. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you've been able to take a break during this holiday season. In this video, we're going to talk about camera gear. Buying camera gear for wildlife photography is often a tough decision. There are a lot of things to consider. Price is definitely one of those things, but even if you put price aside, there are a number of variables that come up quite often. For example, reach in terms of focal length is often something that is uh, important to us because the wildlife is often pretty far away. And even when we can get close to the wildlife or it comes close to us, that's not going to happen all the time. And usually when the wildlife is far away, it's more relaxed and we'll get better shots that way. The thing is, it's actually quite easy to get reach in a camera. You can get a camera that has a very small sensor and typically then also has a small lens. And uh, those cameras don't generally cost that much. Uh, but of course, one of the problems with those cameras is that the image quality is not so great. And that's not something that, that we really want to compromise too much on. So image quality is another consideration. And often the carryability in terms of the size and the weight of, of the gear is also important because we are hiking around with all our gear uh, or perhaps we're flying with our gear. So I'm going to show you uh, by walking through a spreadsheet. That's right, yes, I did mention a spreadsheet in the introduction there, uh, how I look at some of these things. And in doing so, hopefully you'll also become aware of some cameras and lenses that you might uh, not have considered before. So let's get started. So here is our spreadsheet. Let me walk you through this quickly. So in column A here, we have different combinations of cameras and lenses. Obviously I don't have every single camera and every single lens in here. What I'm looking for is cameras that have high resolution sensors and that have good image quality and that are not too big or heavy. So it just turns out that all of these are mirrorless cameras. I'm also looking for lenses that have interesting levels of reach and image quality but again are not too big or heavy. Uh, these are not necessarily all mirrorless lenses. Many of them are, for example, you'll see there are Nikon and Canon uh, lenses for their uh, older mounts uh, and they're being used here with uh, adapters on the mirrorless bodies. In column B we have the sensor type, column C we have the number of megapixels of the sensor, in column D we have the pixel density so you can see this is where we start to factor in the image quality in some way because if this number is greater it means that the photo sites on the sensor are going to be smaller and they're not going to collect as much light you're going to get higher levels of noise we have the focal length of the lens we have the crop factor of the sensor we have the aperture which is the largest aperture of the lens we have the effective aperture which is calculated by taking into account the crop factor because when you have a crop sensor you're going to uh, get a deeper depth of field uh, with uh, that lens. Uh, we have the teleconverter. Uh, if this value is one, it means there is no teleconverter being used. We have the effective focal length. So this is calculated by taking the focal length of the lens and multiplying it by the crop factor and then also uh, taking into account the teleconverter if there is one. And here's where it gets interesting. We have the effective crop factor at 20.4 megapixels. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to take into account that there are some sensors that are high resolution sensors and that allow us to crop further in post. And the reason why we're comparing to 20.4 megapixels is because that is the smallest sensor that appears here in the list. And if you then apply that crop factor, you end up with effective focal length at 20.4 megapixels. We then have the size and the weight of the uh, camera and the lens combined. Uh, the size is the dimensions uh, based on the dimensions provided by the manufacturer. The uh, weight also is uh, 
provided by the manufacturer. But it's important to note that there, I, I know that there are definitely some discrepancies here because some of the manufacturers quote weights with batteries or with cards and some without. Also, in some cases, we have some adapters and teleconverters that are being used here and they're not being taken into account, but they, they usually don't weigh very much. Now, here's where it gets interesting, is what we're trying to do here is we're trying to calculate the reach, the effective focal length uh, that um, is calculated in column L uh, at 20.4 megapixels, but also comparing it and taking into account the size and the weight. Now, these variables, the reach and the size and the weight, they're not weighted in any way in the calculation. So it's just a simplistic way of, of taking into account those three factors, but it would be very easy to, to change or to add some weighting in the calculation here. And then in column P, we're trying to go a little bit further and consider not just the reach, not just the size and the weight, but also some aspects of the image quality. Now, this is a very simplistic calculation. It doesn't take into account a lot of things. There are a lot of other variables that we could perhaps be looking at. You know, it might even have, say, the dynamic range uh, as measured, let's say, from, you know, from the DxO mark scores. There's a lot of things that we could add in here. Again, these are also not weighted. We're just trying to uh, take it into account in some way. And so the idea of this spreadsheet is not to, to, to make absolute comparisons between one uh, combination of camera and lens to another. It's really more just to give us a bit of a guide to sort things in a certain way, to filter out things that we're not interested in and see what bubbles up to the to the top and then and work our way down. So just to give you an example, if I didn't want to include the micro four thirds sensors in here, I could just take those out and that's fairly easy. Uh, if I didn't want to include anything with an aperture, let's say uh, 5.6 or higher, I could just take those out and you'll see that the list is much smaller. If I just wanted to look at uh, purely at, at reach, I could sort like that and you'll see that, for example, using the Sony a7R4 with a 600 f4 allows us to get all the way out to 1038 millimeters effective focal length when we crop into 20.4 megapixels. But this analysis is not really based purely just on reach. We also want to consider the size and the weight. So let's sort like that. And you'll see it, the picture changes quite dramatically. Uh, but then we really also do need to consider the image quality in some way. And so really we want to, in most cases, be sorting by that column. Okay, so let's work our way down the list here as it's been sorted according to column P. If you are not aware of the Nikon PF lenses or the Canon DO lenses, these are what are known as Fresnel lenses. You can look this up, Fresnel, F-R-E-S-N-E-L. It's a interesting technology that basically is a way to reduce the size and the weight of a lens. This Nikon 300 PF is a very interesting lens. It's quite small and light. The lens only weighs 755 grams and it is a 300 f4 prime. So quite impressive. They also have a 500 PF, which you'll see further on down the list here. Uh, it is a f5.6, uh, so it's a 500 prime and the weight of the lens is 1.46 kilograms. So again, really light and also small uh, given the, the reach of that lens. You'll also see a Canon 400 F4 DO. DO stands for diffractive optics. This is Canon's version of a Fresnel lens. Uh, that lens is tiny given that it is a 400 F4. Uh, the lens weighs 2.1 kilos, and uh, it's very, very short. Uh, so these are really interesting lenses to look at. Um, right now, Canon and Nikon are the only manufacturers that have Fresnel lenses. Sony doesn't have any, for example. Now, you don't uh, generally get anything for free, so there are uh, some issues with the Fresnel lenses. Uh, for example, the bokeh isn't always the best. Uh, there can be some flaring issues, uh, but they're certainly interesting if you want to really 
prioritize size and weight in your considerations. Uh, they're definitely worth looking at. Now, uh, another thing I want to tell you about uh, is uh, in terms of lenses, uh, the Canon 200 f2.8 Prime is a fairly interesting lens. This is uh, a lens that only weighs 765 grams. So that is quite impressive given that it's a 200 prime uh, for full frame. And uh, you may recall from previous videos, I talked about the Sony 135G Master, uh, which is down here on row 13. And I mentioned that when you use that lens and then you crop it, uh, you can get you know to 200 millimeters or more. You can get effectively to 233 millimeters if you crop down to 20.4 megapixels. Uh, but uh, with the, the 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 200 f 2.8, you can go a lot further than that because it's it's 200 millimeters natively, and if you crop that down to 20.4 megapixels, you can go all the way out to 404 millimeters. So it's it's a fairly interesting uh, lens, and also. The, the G Master, the Sony 135 G Master weighs 950 grams. The Canon weighs uh, 765 grams. So very, very interesting lens. And uh, you'll see that, in fact, I have a, uh, on row 11 here, I have a combination here with that lens adapted uh, using the Sigma MC11 uh, to use with the Sony a7R4. Now, again, this whole approach of looking at all this data is just really to use it as a bit of a guide to give us some hints. You, of course, need to go off and then do a lot of other investigation to see uh, what the, the true image quality is, whether there are issues, you know, what the autofocusing capabilities are of some of these, these cameras and, and so forth and, and anything else that is important to you. So, for example, uh, you'll see here, uh, I have the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, and it scores quite high uh, in this this list here, and you'll see it that it appears in numerous other combinations further down. It's a fairly interesting camera. It's a quite a new camera that Canon brought out. It's an APS-C camera. What's interesting about it is it has a 32.5 megapixel sensor. That's the highest resolution APS-C sensor that is out right now and hence you'll see the pixel density here is the highest of any sensor that you'll see uh, in this sheet uh, and hence you can uh, get um, you can crop that a fair bit uh, and apparently the image quality is uh, at, at high ISO is actually pretty pretty decent but there are lots of things about the camera that are not so great as well it doesn't even come with an electronic viewfinder in fact you need to add that on as an additional item it's not particularly you know, expensive or big and heavy, but it certainly does add to the to the bulk. Uh, also, uh, the camera only has one card slot, although it is a UHS-2 card slot. Uh, it does not have a joystick to move the focus area around. You need to use the touchscreen to do that. Uh, also, the battery is very small. It only is rated for about 350 shots. Uh, it does have quite impressive uh, burst rates, I think around 14 frames per second, which is quite interesting, but you can you can see that if you're bursting a lot and your battery is only rated for 350 uh, shots it's not going to last uh, fairly long but it is a very interesting camera for what it delivers in terms of its size and weight and you can see when you when you pair it with something like the 200 f 28 here uh, you get something that that uh, rates quite high in in the way things are calculated here now another uh, lens I wanted to tell you about is this one and I'm cheating a little bit here because this lens the Tamron 70 to 180 is not actually out yet uh, all the specs have been released which is why I've been able to put it here in the spreadsheet but the lens is not actually coming out till March uh, but a lot of people are very excited about it I'm very excited about it. I'm definitely looking forward to getting it uh, now you'll note that the focal length seems a little bit odd here because you would typically have a 70 to 200. Uh, what Tamron have worked out is that if they shave 20 millimeters off the long end here, uh, that you they were able to save quite a lot in terms of size and weight. And in fact, you'll see uh, further down below here is the Sony uh, 70 to 200 f 2.8. So quite comparable, but rates further down, even though the reach of that lens is higher. It's a 200 versus a 180. It comes at uh, quite a substantial penalty in terms of size and weight. So Tamron have 
done an impressive thing here. You'll see, for example, the Sony 70-200 weighs 1.48 kilograms, whereas the uh, Tamron weighs only 815 uh, grams. So quite a substantial savings there. So um, that's that's a lens that a lot of people are excited about. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, now, this is something that's, that's fairly interesting, um, and that is the Sigma 50 to 100. This is, this is interesting. This is a APS-C, it's a crop lens. So it's made specifically for crop sensors, uh, and the aperture is f1.8. It's a constant f1.8 lens. Uh, and so you get some interesting weight savings here because it's made specifically for crop bodies, and so uh, the lens is smaller. However, it is not so light. Uh, the lens weighs 1.49 kilos, so it's actually around the same weight, 10 grams heavier, in fact, than the Sony 70-200 f2.8. So, uh, uh, And apparently there are some focus issues with the lens, uh, So, uh, but still fairly interesting to look at. So I think that's it in terms of some of the, the interesting uh, cameras and lenses I wanted to tell you about. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to uh, let you know about some of those if you don't know about them already, but also just to show you how I'm using this spreadsheet as a way for me to just keep track of, of some of these interesting bits of gear whenever something looks interesting I, and it's something that I, I might want to consider or I'm just curious about how it, 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 it might uh, rate uh, uh, compared to other other cameras and lenses i'll put it in this spreadsheet here and then just sort of uh, sort by various columns and uh, see how it fares i hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it informative and helpful if you have any questions or comments please post below don't forget to give this one a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe i'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.